You are now listening to the IELTS podcast. How to avoid the most common grammar mistake seen in the IELTS writing task. Now, this episode is all about the writing task. And this biggest single problem I see every single day day when I correct essays except Sundays. I'm not joking, I've corrected over 1,000 essays and I'm quite surprised myself but if you do three or four, five every single day in a year it's quick, it's very easy to reach over a thousand. All of these essays practically have this one problem I'm going to describe and hopefully solve in this episode and of course we're going to look at a very practical technique to help you overcome the problem. So not only are we going to explore it, then explain the theory, but I want to go a little bit further and give you a technique that you can use, a practical one, so you can really incorporate and apply all the knowledge that you're going to learn in this episode. You may have guessed that the biggest single problem I see in practically every single essay is to do with the articles. And although articles is a problem for every single student who, usually every single student who is learning English, and this may seem like a general English lesson, it's actually not going to be so general because every single example I give you to demonstrate what I'm saying will be from a sentence or a possible sentence that could have been written in an IELTS task to essay. So it's extremely practical, this podcast, lots of value. Let's get cracking. We will start by reviewing the basics very quickly and then I'll go into details about how to use a system, it's basically a diagram, and that the diagram helps us to determine whether it's a, an, the, or zero article. Okay, zero article means no article involved. First of all, what we need to do is determine whether it is a countable noun or uncountable. Very briefly, countable nouns or count nouns, as they used as they are known in American English, are the nouns that are very easy to recognize and these are the ones we can count. For example, uh, in this sentence, cities is the count noun, is the countable noun. The three largest cities in England are London, Birmingham and Manchester. The next sentence, most international students have completed more than three tests. Two countable nouns in that sentence. They're quite easy to recognize, like I said. Usually it's with an S on the end. Occasionally you'll have to change the spelling, but generally speaking, those are your countable nouns. Now, your uncountable nouns are words like work, weather, travel, cash, accommodation. And these are a single concept that is hard to divide. Like I said before, this is a grammatical category, not a practical category, because in other languages, these exact same words can be divided. So just bear that in mind. When we are learning these, remember that it's a grammatical category rather than a practical category. There is another type of uncountable noun, which is probably easier to remember and these ones are the uh, it's still called uncountable noun but it's a single concept that's hard to divide for example materials like water in english in the english language you cannot have three waters that's just impossible another example would be advice you cannot have three advices no it's impossible if we do need to quantify them or count them we use quantifiers and we can say the lecturer gave three pieces of advice and then we've quantified it. Another one, Scotland, Wales and England have too much rain. This is a, a single concept and it's 
difficult, it's impossible to divide it. Yep, you can't divide rain in the English language. So far, we have countable nouns and we have uncountable nouns. The next stage is plural uncountable nouns. These are less common and they have no singular form and they cannot be used with numbers. Uh, I'll give you some examples because they'll just make it 10 times easier. Trousers, jeans, pants, scissors, spectacles, customs, clothes, regards, police. And I'll give you some sentences. International, uh, sorry, international trade facilitates the movement of goods and services. Here, goods refers to like the merchandise, the stock, yeah, in an economical sense. I'll say that again. International trade facilitates the movement of goods and services. Next one. Studies show an increase of demand of Asian goods from all corners of the world. Hopefully you recognize that idiomatic expression from a previous podcast. I'll say it again. Studies show an increase of demand of Asian goods from all corners of the world. Plural uncountable nouns. No singular form. Here we're going to get to the process of determining whether or not it will have an article and what type of article it will have. If you go to the actual website and find this post, then you'll see a diagram that is extremely practical and I strongly recommend you copy this diagram and try and memorize it. If you know that articles are a challenge for you, then this article will be of immense value to you. Okay, especially if you master how to use it. Now that brings me on to just uh, an important side note. How do you know if articles are a challenge for you? How do you know if you're losing points from your use of articles or not? Well, it's quite simple. You get your essay checked. Not getting your essay checked is a mistake. And I'd strongly recommend you do this because if not, you're not going to discover your errors and it's difficult for you to improve. And like I said before, it will save you money because if you find out all your errors before paying $300 for your exam, then it has been an incredible investment. All right, so let's carry on. So the first step was to determine countability. Determining the countability basically means, can we count it? I'll give you a, a sentence now. A scientist in Melbourne has discovered various new plant species in the suburbs of St Kilda. Watch this. Is this a singular Noun? Is this a countable noun? Is this plural or is this uncountable? A scientist. Of course, it's a singular noun. Next one. Numerous studies from the University of Salamanca, Spain, prove that students participating in international exchange schemes had superior grades. Here the noun it was a countable noun. Studies. Okay. And another one, if you were... Uh, if you're really enthusiastic, it would have been students. Okay, two countable nouns. Next one. Goods from Russia are now exempt from tariffs, quotas and trade duties. Again, goods from Russia are now exempt from tariffs, quotas and trade duties. This, of course, is a uncountable noun. Goods. Next one. Information related to the discovery of a vaccine for dengue fever was withheld by the authorities. First word we want to classify here is um, information. I'll say it again. Information related to the discovery of a vaccine for dengue fever was withheld by the authorities. Of course, this is an uncountable noun. Hopefully, those examples have helped you classify it. That's the first step we do. We determine countability. Can we count it or not? 
then we go to step two and in step two we have to determine whether it's definite or indefinite that doesn't mean much to many people all right definite or indefinite here's a very concise explanation of what definite means okay if it's definite in a grammatical sense it is presumed known to the reader definiteness presumed known to the reader write that down all right that's a lot of value actually if you're if you're learning english indefinite presumed unknown to the reader indefiniteness is presumed unknown to the reader and definiteness is presumed known to the reader so hopefully you wrote those down we can be sure it's definite i.e known to the reader if it is the second time we mention it a brief example a scientist in melbourne has discovered various new plant species in the suburbs of st kilda the scientist later found the new varieties were poisonous and informed a laboratory in the uk here we said a scientist because it was presumed unknown because we'd never spoken about it before then the second time we mentioned it we said the scientist because presumed known we presume it's known because it's the second time we've mentioned it so therefore it changes from a scientist to the scientist now just to quickly review first step is we determine countability is it singular countable or is it plural or uncountable after that we ask the question is the noun definite and singular countable we will use the if it is singular countable and not definite we use a or an if it's plural or countable and definite we use the and if it's plural or countable and not definite we use zero article we use the zero article which basically means no article let's work with some examples to hopefully bring it home and make sure that it's completely understood and as before i'd strongly recommend that you write down with pen and paper these sentences because they are useful sentences that you could very easily find in your task two essay so these sentences some of them are going to be incorrect some of them are going to be correct i would like you to listen carefully perhaps write it down perhaps put pause the recording and then determine whether it was correct or incorrect let's go the art is considered one of the most noble of pastimes and the disciplines range from sculptures music dance and even selfies correct or incorrect here we wouldn't say the art because it's a a concept that we cannot really divide we cannot have two arts or three arts let's go to the next one so listen to the sentence tell me if it's incorrect or incorrect and this would be at the, the beginning of an essay recent studies by harvard university clearly showed the philippines as one of the leading countries in asia regarding qualifications the studies also identified vietnam thailand and south korea as strong competition in the future one more time recent studies by harvard university clearly showed the philippines as one of the leading countries in asia regarding it qualifications the studies also identified vietnam thailand and south korea a strong competition in the future so let's have a look at the first one we've got recent studies should this be the recent studies or recent studies well here it is zero article and the reason is because first of all determine the countability studies it is plural so if you're looking at the diagram that means it goes to the right hand side is it definite 
is it known or unknown to the listener? Well, because it's the beginning of the of the essay, like I said, then it is presumed unknown to the listener. So therefore, we will use the zero article, no article. Okay. Later, in the next sentence, we're still talking. We're still writing about the same study. Okay, or the same studies. So once again, singular, uncountable, or plural, and uncountable. Well, it's plural. Okay. So, goes to the right. It's plural. And now, is the study presumed known to the listener or presumed unknown to the listener? Well, it's presumed known to the listener because it's the second time we are discussing it. Okay, so that's why in the second instance we have to say the studies. Hopefully you got that right. I'll just say it again. Recent studies by Harvard University clearly showed the Philippines as one of the leading countries in Asia regarding IT qualifications. The studies also identified Vietnam, Thailand and South Korea a strong competition in the, in the future. Final one and then we're going to go on to the final part okay let's see research now I specifically chose all these words because they are words that are commonly used in a good IELTS task to essay and I see them used incorrectly on a daily basis so now we're going to deal with the word research and this fragment of text will would have been found near the beginning of an essay. So let's go. Research from the US confidently proved governmental links between three countries, Scotland, France, and the Netherlands. The research clearly identified without any doubt that these governments had communicated with each other on numerous occasions. Is this correct or incorrect? Well, it is correct. We have research from the US and it's practically uh, the same as before. Okay, let's run it through the diagram. So, first of all, we determine countability. Is research a countable noun? No, it's not. It is completely uncountable. Okay, afterwards we determine is it definite? Well, as I said before, it is near the beginning of the essay, so we can presume it is unknown to the listener, so therefore zero article. So it is correct. Research from the US. Okay. Later in that text, we refer to uh, the research, the exact same research, the same research we mentioned earlier, so in this case it is definite because now it is presumed known to the listener so starting from the beginning again it's an uncountable noun as we determined earlier is it definite is it known or unknown is it presumed known or presumed unknown to the listener well in this case we can presume it is known because it's the second time we are mentioning it so I'll just say it one more time research from the US confidently proved governmental links between three countries Scotland France and the Netherlands the research the research now I'm using the article the because it's the second time I'm referring to it. The research clearly identified without any doubt that these governments had communicated with each other on numerous occasions. I would strongly recommend you go to ieltspodcast.com, sign up. But what I wanted to say was um, really check out that diagram. It's incredibly useful and it's definitely worth memorizing if you do find articles a challenge. podcast.com.